especially the representative aid often uh, for calling this press conference and what a great job he does as the um, appropriations chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here this morning um, with Mike Culp, my colleague from Delaware County Council, and basically to address, okay, what Representative Adolph has outlined to you. We in the county continue to provide those services as much as we can. Understand something, our sources of revenue, as, it, as this comes in right now and as this doesn't resolve, comes out, basically comes back onto the county, and then that feeds into the county's budget once this is not established. But for Representative Adolph to stand in front of you is today and, the governor, and, and, and acknowledge that there was a $400 million for education and the governor has to take several days or two or three days to make a decision of how, what he's going to do, that's not, that's not governing. We as elected officials, when you take those positions, you take that oath, oath of office, you're a leader and you learn and you're outright to govern what you believe in. This gentleman was elected last year. It's his first year as the governor of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. He knew what was, it, what was in front of him, okay, but to outright veto the entire state budget is ludicrous. This, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't get anybody or any pressure anywhere. And for the providers to be hurt by that, for this group here, and with, uh, as Brenda Dawson, and I remember Brenda when I was in Harrisburg, and for what they do with Pathways does, and all the providers in, the, in, in Delaware County, that's a shame. That's not governing. That's not being a leader. And that's what we need to happen here. Every day, elected officials will say what they believe in and they produce in what they believe in. This is crucial for Delaware County. It costs Delaware County on an average of $2 million a month. And as this scale continues to grow, and this crisis continues to grow, and we're moving into September, and if, this, if there is no conclusion to this, this is what happens not only to Delaware County, to the other surrounding counties in the southeast and the other counties throughout the, of, of the state of Pennsylvania. So, Governor, I'm looking you in the face today. I'm calling on you once again. You need to make this happen for, De for Pennsylvania, and you need to make it happen for Delaware County. We continue to provide what we need to do. We're responsible here, and we're trying to do that. So what has Representative Adolph and Representative Killian has said, Please, um, and to the providers, we're on your side. Believe me when I tell you. We're not here today to make a political talk. We're here today because we're sincere in what we believe, and we're sincere. I've been in that position, okay, in Harrisburg as a state representative. I sat there for month after month when a budget couldn't be decided. And I also sat in that, in that position when a governor blue lined certain items in that budget. But to flatly turn it around and say, here, General Assembly, and put up your nose and say, I'm in charge. Well, what are you in charge of? What are you in charge of at that point? So, again, Representative Adolph, thank you. Representative Killian, Representative Barrara, Representative Jameson Tour. At this time, I'd like to introduce my colleague, um, Mike Culp, who serves on, on Delaware County with us, and just to give his oversight as far as this crisis. I, too, would like to thank State Representative Adolph and State Representative Killian for having us here today. Each year, Delaware County Department of Human Services works with local providers to service 38,000 individuals who need assistance to lead health, healthy, meaningful lives. Just Our Child Office of Children and Youth Services handles issues of abuse and neglect. They serve over 3,000 children each year. It's because of these children that we stand here today. In the absence of a state budget, the governor needs to protect these children, their families, and others who are at risk. I just want to give a few examples of the providers who the governor is trying to not fund and cut off while he's playing games. The family support line helps children who are victims of sexual abuse, which is an unspeakable crime. Family support line just opened a child advocacy center in media to give children a safe, caring environment while they go through the judicial process. We cannot turn our back on these young victims. The Community Actions Action Agency of Delaware County is our anti-poverty agency. One of their many services is providing shelter for homeless men, women, and children. Where will these people go? Who will feed them if the governor does not fund this service? The Domestic Abuse Project helps women who are victims of domestic violence. These are women who have been abused and who fear for their lives and need shelter. What will happen to them? We are here at Pathways PA Family Center, which helps homeless mothers, teenage mothers, and their children achieve self-sufficiency.
what will happen to them. We are also joined by the staff from the Village in Rosemont. One of their services is a residential program for girls ages 12 through 18 who have serious mental health issues stemming from trauma. What will become of these young girls in the absence of funding? In Delaware County, we are committed to help our vulnerable residents. We are committed to helping them during this budget process also. But we believe that all of these critical human services should be funded now as a matter of public health and safety. And I'd like to use Governor from Governor's Wolf's own website. These areas that he will be funded affect the health and safety and protection of Pennsylvania. If these groups that I just read you about aren't in that category, I don't know what is. Um, at this point in time